Hi, in this video I want to quickly show you how I run our fridge for a full week out in the middle of nowhere on solar power. Um, we are currently camping here in Conneri Zoo National Park in Zimbabwe. This is my old 3.4 litre V6 Toyota Prado and this is my brother's 3 litre KZT diesel Prado of the same year. Now let me quickly show you uh, the right way to do it. So this is my brother, the safari expert. Go check out his channel. This is his system. It's, uh, I don't know the brand, but it's just a small charger with a lithium battery in there and it runs the fridge and the charges from the alternator. Now my hack job I made myself and that's what I want to show you in this video. So I've got a 90 liter dual uh, national lunar fridge. So it takes about six so six and a half amps and my old solar controller Victron 5 amp was not enough to charge this or to run this. Um, I used to travel with a 40 liter Engel fridge. So what I did was I took my old National, National Luna battery box, which wasn't working anymore, just took the plastic box and I fitted a normal 105 amp hour deep cycle battery and to it I connected a solar controller. Now this is a cheap Chinese Kings controller. I had a Victron on here um, and that Victron was the 5 amp that I used to on the Engel and the day before we left for this trip I realized that um, the fridge take, runs on more amps than what the solar controller can push out. So I quickly pirated the Kings and this is a 20 amp from our caravan and I screwed it to this box and then basically connected the battery to the solar controller and then the solar panel through a Anderson plug with an extension that is wrapped in um, that plastic you can see the plastic sheath there, each one individually wrapped so they can't short out and then uh, taped, insulation taped all the way through. This is quite a long cable. I run it through the window and then out here to another plug there and then up to the solar panel on the roof. Now I think this is an old 105 watt, 150 watt solar panel. So it was a cheap panel. And this I just strapped to the top of our luggage each time. It's quite a mission, <laughs> but at least you can quickly remove it, unplug it there, use the extension if you want and put it out there in the sun and plug it in here. So that goes into the solar controller and then from here we run the load. So the load goes to this Anderson plug, which is a different color. Remember these two, the two gray ones go into each other. They can't fit into the red, so I can't mix it up. And then from there it goes to uh, the fridge. And then the night before I watched some YouTube videos on people ex uh, showing and demonstrating how a short works, like a short circuit. And they tested uh, fuses and trip switches and they showed a very alarming clip of a short circuit without a fuse. It's just a bunch of wires melting and starting a fire. So that next morning before we left uh, for Zimbabwe, I did the following. I fitted a just a normal 12 volt fuse holder. So there I've got a 35 amp fuse. It's slightly larger than the 20 amps that this uh, solar controller can push out. So there's a 35 amp normal automotive uh, fuse in there and I've got a whole bunch of fuses, smaller ones as well. And that goes to the battery. And you always want to put the fuse as close as possible to the positive terminal. So if there's any short in this whole system, um, it will burn the fuse and then you can troubleshoot and replace it. Then what I also did was I brought a thousand watt inverter to convert the DC power from the battery to 220 volts to charge cameras, toothbrushes and also to run my set link. I've got a video on the set link and how it works linked up here somewhere. So anyway, so this thing, um, when I plugged in the oh one important thing is this you can't plug this into the load there because it overloads so what you need to do is unfortunately run this straight to the battery so there's no overload 
because this smart controller will do its own overload thing whereas if you plug it straight to the battery um, it will run the battery flat so anyways what i did there was i fitted another anderson plug straight to the battery and when i plugged it in it made a <laughs> nasty sparks there and that that often happens and there's no way to switch this even if it's switched off it still made the sparks and i don't like that um so i wanted to put a fuse in there but then i also wanted to switch so what i did was i just took the old trip switch from the original national lunar box and fitted it straight from the positive there so now i can now i can flip the switch it's off now and you can switch it on and now there's power to this plug here switch it off again so once it's switched off i can plug it in without any sparks and then as soon as, as, soon as it's uh, plugged in i can switch it on and then i can switch on the inverter and you've got your power and this uh, switch will also the idea is that this will trip if there's a short now i did a lot of research on this and i don't know if it actually will but this was from the original box i assume it will but this is a normal 65 amp ac switch now the problem with ac is you really need a dc switch in here because ac obviously the current alternates and it might not be quick enough to uh, disable the power between switches but in the direction of the current so you need a dc switch in here and i actually couldn't find one i went to a lot of shops and they, they don't have dc switches where i live um, apparently it's not that common so i'll look for one but that is what they use on all these fancy boxes even the more expensive national lunar boxes that's almost ten thousand rand or that's five hundred six seven hundred dollars they still use these same 65 amp ac switches so i assume it will work they must have tested it but anyways that is my very simple setup one thing that i found with the this um, solar controller is because it doesn't have a screen you can't read um, what it's doing and MPPT is different from the PWM. Now I know the PWM ones, you might have, you'll have 19 volts coming in from the solar panel and the battery might be 12.2. And then as soon as, as soon as it starts charging, it will equalize, it will, it will both show 13 am, uh, volts or 14 volts or whatever. They'll both show the same as they charge. And then as soon as they stop charging, so when the battery is full, it will shoot up to 19 volts or whatever is coming from the sun and the battery will show its battery voltage which should be 13 or 13.2 volts when it's full now the problem with this one it doesn't show you anything and it also doesn't do that so it doesn't do what i expected of it so the solar panel was always showing a higher voltage than the battery and so i don't know if it was actually charging and the one day it was 40 degrees celsius so that's 105 110 degrees fahrenheit um, so it really struggled and I had to use my brother's backup power. So let me show you how I at least monitor this. Okay, so I'll flip open this neat little cover there. Then I'll take the negative. I've got a, a multimeter here, so I'll put it on 12 volts. I'll put the negative on the battery terminal and I can just touch the positive there. And you can see now it's 12.37 volts. Now this is quite late in the day. It's been running all day. The sun is not that hot anymore. It's um, 20 past 5 in the afternoon. Sun's about to set. So the battery is still fairly okay. But what I want to show you is if we switch to the solar panel. It should be charging now. And that's showing. Oh wait. It's showing 13 volts. Obviously it's not pointing directly. Oh no, there it's 19 volts. You can see it's 19 volts. Oh wait, it's actually jumping around quite a bit. So it is charging. That is exactly what I expected. So it looks like it's also coming down. The voltage is coming down. So it means it's charging. Oh, there it stopped charging again. So it looks like it's pulse charging. You can see the voltage comes down. It's going to go down to around 13 then stop again and jump up to something 19 volts oh now ah oh, there we go 19 so now it's not charging so it looks like it's meeting in the middle the same as the pwm and that is what i don't understand i don't know if this charger is incorrect or whether it's supposed to do this 
So if you know, please comment below and explain to me what's happening here. Because I know with my old PWM charger, it, it shows you what's happening. It'll show you the voltage or the, the amps are going into the battery. So when I get home, I'll just buy myself a proper Victron again, a 30 amp uh, Victron this time. I'll plug it in there. And what I'll also do is get myself a slider for the fridge so it can slide out and put um, drawers on this side and a flat top so I can load on top of it. Because now, whenever you load anything on top of the fridge, you have to remove it before you can get to the fridge. It's also not tied to the car on the front, so it slides when you uh, go over bumps. So that is a very a hack job home DIY solar controller system for your fridge and we've been camping here for more than a week now without any issues having cold beers every night um, so and it wasn't that expensive if you have any questions <laughs> ask me in the comments and, and i'll answer with you my very limited knowledge um, yeah thank you for watching see you next time